and welcome back guys hello everyone so we are going to continue working with our poker stuff and um, as you remember now we play in position on the button versus uh, utg open okay without any further ado guys you already all know if you watched the previous videos like how i work with this um so so far i generally have two programs here right there is poker tracker and one more is po power equilab Unfortunately, today my power equilab has expired and uh, I will use temporarily this Flopzilla. Uh, Flopzilla, I'm a total newbie with this program, but I'll try. Okay, so let's investigate some of the hands. And I opened up, uh, opened up from the previous session some of these hands here. And uh, immediately this one caught my eye, so I will be working with this 9-8 suited and i will imagine that this guy on utg opened okay in real life actually the guy on this cutoff opens here but as far as we don't play post flop that much so it doesn't matter for us okay i'm going to imagine that this guy on utg opened here okay so to be honest flopzilla is not that comfortable for me i'm not a big fan of flopzilla here um but um okay i mean we have no choice we have to work okay so i want to investigate like what i call with versus a utg opener as far as you remember um wow this program is really different how to okay yeah so as far as you remember um on utg <laughs> i don't even know how to delete this hand uh okay okay let it be like this so uh, the guy on UTG opens 6-6+, six, six right, and uh, ace-10+, um, here ace-9+, and king-9+, queen-9, 50%, jack-9, 10-9, right, uh, ace-2, ace-3, ace-4, ace-5, 50% with ace-2, right, and so on. So all my previous videos were devoted to UTG play. And uh, now I'm going to defend here on the button. So first let me see what is our actually range here. Okay, I usually call 3 plus versus a 14.1% opener. Okay, I will mark first all the hands and then I'll throw away some hands that I'm going to 3 bet here. Wait a second. Okay, wait, no, wait, maybe, ah, maybe like this. Okay, no, wait. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, look here. Now I, I think I start getting this program. Yeah, so you see, you can choose different weights here on the top. You can choose one, two, three different weights there, but I don't need this at the moment. Okay, good. So these are the hands plus I'm going to call with a little bit of tens. As far as you remember, only 25% of my tens are going to um, call there. The reason for this, and I will always be telling you here this in the upcoming videos, there's going to be like my mantra. You need to think every time, what do you charge? If you play versus an opponent that opens up only 6% of their range, how can you charge him with, for example, with your 6-5 suited call? It is like you don't want to call this 6-5 all the time. There's a 6% open, right? Because the opponent is so tight, you really want to outplay him. The best thing for you is to call... Um, versus such an opponent is to call with these hands, right? Pocket pairs. And, you know, you don't want even to possibly call with ace, 10, offsuit, ace, jack, offsuit, right? Ace, queen, offsuit. You might want to fold these hands or maybe three bet, but you don't want to call with them. Every time think how you can outplay your opponent, how you can charge your opponent. This is the first question that you ask yourself. And the second question that I always ask myself, what hands do I have to charge? If you don't have any hands to charge your opponent to get his money, then like what to play that, right? This is the thing about uh, bets as well. You know, when you bet on the flop, uh, on the turn, on the river, doesn't matter. You always need to think, okay? You don't want to make your opponent fold all the time. You want to earn his money, right? So how do you earn his money? You want to charge his uh, hands, right? 
Uh, and then you need to think what hands do you have to charge, you know, his hands that he possibly struck. Whether there is a flush draw on the table or a top hand, top card on the table, right? You need to think how to charge these hands. Okay, so that's why, like, guys, I don't uh, call with so many ace tens. I call with only 25% of my ace ten here. And uh, king queen. I think I can call king queen, but not le not less than this. Okay, I don't like to call with these guys because they are already automatically weaker than our opponent's opening range, right? As you remember, um, our opponent or me <laughs> in the place of uh, the UTG, I open with king queen offsuit, and I don't open king jack offsuit, right? So, like, uh, that's why there is no reason to call with weaker hands here, kinda. Okay, I'm going to call... Wait a second, let me put away the weight here. Yeah, with these guys here and with these guys. And I take these nines. I really like them. I take ace, five, four, three, two. Yeah, these guys. I still don't play ace, six, ace, seven, ace, eight. If the opponent is wider, for example, the opponent is 17%. Or 20% open. This this is a recreational player, right? Then I might want to call with these hands, right? They will be like uh, playing better versus a wider range. But other than that, I don't want to play with them. Uh, all these suited connectors are really nice to play in position. They really well realize their position, right? Because you can check back, catch the trips, you can check back catch the second pair, you can check back, get the draw straight, draw flush, right? You don't need to bet all the time. We will be investigating betting later. Okay, and I think actually I might want to call 25% of... Uh, wait a second, why is it? Okay, maybe this one, 2-2, two, two. maybe 25% sometimes, maybe 15%. Honestly, not a big fan of 2-2 two, two here. Okay, next one. Let's see. Now, what are we going to do here? What else? Anything else? Yeah, possibly some of these guys, 10, 9, 9, 7, right? They might be good um, calls as well, because like we are concentrating around middle high board with all our suited connectors. We hope to get our straights and flushes, right? And uh, thus, we are going to use our position. When we want, we want to check back and uh, outplay our opponent. Okay, good. So, so far it is like this. Now, let's think. What are we going to 3-bet here? Uh, we are going to 3-bet ace-ace, king-king, ace-king suited. We are going to 3-bet this ace-king offsuit, but not all the time. Sometimes you want to call. The reason why you want to call with ace-king offsuit sometimes is because you block a lot of aces and kings of your opponent. So your opponent is less likely to have ace-king, okay? And thus, uh, you have a very huge chance to catch an ace or a king on the flop board. And you will be very strong in that position and sometimes you will be charging your opponent fully. So um, this is really good. I think as far as we 3-bet, I think we're going to 3-bet uh, why does it always change? I really don't get this program, to be honest. I always put this 25% here. How to, like, forever have a 25 here? Okay, so I will bet 75% of ace-king offsuit, and 25% of ace-king I will call, okay? Very good. Now, I want to have uh, some more stuff. 50% I'm gonna bet my queens. Ace Queen and I think King Queen Ace Jack King Queen suited possibly like this. Okay, like this. I'm fine with that. And uh, I want to three bet Jack Jack a little bit. Yeah, so I three bet Jack Jack 25% of the time. That's why in my way range, weight range that I will call, I will have 75% of my jacks right so let me go to 75 percent this is going to be in my calling range 75 percent 75 percent 10 10 75 percent 9 9 so we do want to bet a three bet these hands if you think about this there's just 1.5 hands out of six 
that we're going to 3-bet our opponent. You see, that's why like, I don't quite like to work with this program. I cannot even see properly my 3-bets here, to be honest. You, you see, really hard to see that. And I cannot compare with other ranges, unfortunately. Okay, I want to 3-bet, sometimes ace-10, ace-jack. Um, I think, and these small ones, king-jack, queen-jack. Queen just maybe one hand out of four, why not? Because we really want to have some of these uh, two connecting cards uh, on the board. Uh, we will be playing very carefully. The thing is, we might strike a straight, right? And the opponent will have no choice but to call because he will have a set or he will have two pairs. Yeah, at the same time, we can properly use our position. If the opponent is stronger, you feel like the opponent might defend with ace-king suited and you have king-jack, right? So you possibly will check back on the river, right? So this is really good, very powerful play. Okay, and I want to bet 50% of my ace-5 and maybe 25% of ace-4, ace-3, right? Ace four, ace three. Okay, now it works. By the way, I click and we have twenty five percent. Good. I want as well to bet. Oh wait a second. If we bet here, um, twenty five percent, then in our calling range we will have seventy five percent. So this is our calling range here. Okay, and we will uh, bet twenty five percent of these suited connectors, which makes seventy five percent in our calling range. Okay, good. Um. Does so far all right, all right. Ace ten. What is this? Ah, yeah, this calling range, calling range, calling range, calling range, calling range, calling range, calling, 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 calling. Okay, yeah, it feels fine so far. Feels fine. Good. So this is going to be um my range. It makes approximately twelve point seven percent. Approximately one hundred sixty eight combinations that we're going to work with against our opponent. Our opponent still will have aces, kings, and ace, kings suited, right? Because they are, we don't have them, they are in our 3 betting range. Okay, good. And now, let's see the board that we have today. 2, 5, jack. Okay, so 2 of spades, 5 of uh, clubs, 5 of clubs, and jack of hearts. Yeah, jack of hearts. Check of hearts. Voila, so this is going to be our, um, wait a second, there are some filters here, as you can see, offense, ah, so you can choose here like different combinations and set filters here, okay, uh -huh, I see that. For example, look, you can find the set and activate filter and you see you have this set for these hands here, okay, good. Uh, but I still prefer old school style, guys. I really like to think about every hand and find it myself. Now, I want to see what am I going to... Oh, there are no, no colors even. How am I going to mark these hands? This is a little bit crazy. Okay, let's try. Um, okay. Huh. Okay. So if the opponent bets here, because the board is quite favorable for our opponent, the opponent will bet with queens, kings, and aces, right? And uh, thus, uh, we need to defend properly. Plus, the opponent will bet sometimes with uh, his sets of jacks, I think he will call. Maybe sets of fives he might bet. Plus, he will be combining with his bluffs, ace, three, ace, four ace 2, I think he will be bluffing, and um, let me see what else, I think he will be bluffing with 10-9, uh, with uh, queen 10, with king queen, right, so all these runner runner straights, uh, he will be playing with them, and some gut shots, so the opponent's bet is still very significant, right, approximately he will have 18 value bets, maybe more, if we include ace-jack, maybe around 20, 25 value bets, and around 50 bluffs, right? So the opponent will bet around 75 combinations approximately here, maybe, if the opponent is aggressive and not a passive neat. A lot of needs are passive, by the way, if you noticed. They bet only when they have value hands. Okay, good. Now, so this is our calling range. What are we going to 3-bet? 
honestly so hard for me to work here okay i suppose i need to choose here yeah i think so sets i will three bet my sets okay zero point where does it even show it uh, okay so here 3.92 percent of hands and how many hands are uh, these are i don't even know okay um okay now what else top pair i think we are going to um work with some of our top pairs how can it be i don't think jack okay look here guys you see uh he marks all the top pairs but we need to have um top pair i i'm sorry guys i really have no idea how to work here um how to mark these hands okay i suppose i will just try to unmark them okay so i will be three betting i think do i actually need to three bet here the board is pretty dry that's why we can safely i think um call here most of the time at the same time we might if we want uh three bet some of the hands if the opponent bets for example 33 percent of the pot which a lot of players do and then you might want to raise a little bit i think your ace jack ace jack and you might want to three bet your uh i think a little bit of fives right but not all of the fives i would mark 50 percent uh, i i really cannot work with this program okay 50 percent of ace jacks 50 percent of ace five okay uh but look these are value hands that you are going to work with uh how do you balance these bets with your bluffs if this raises i think you might want to raise these hands ace four and ace three i think it is quite logical to call with the second pair ace five right it is all right to call with ace two especially hearts and uh, clubs right but ace three ace four they are quite good to three bet here so i think i will be three betting them these guys okay so i'll mark them like this uh still very uncomfortable for me to work here yeah and the rest let's see what are we going to call we are going to call ace five we're going to call ace two we are going to call here uh some of the jacks especially weaker jacks king jack queen jack yeah jack jack i think we want to call here we don't want to three bet yeah, we want to come to the next street very strong sometimes very rarely you can do this right because our opponent does have some bluffs in his hand plus you charge in this way some very aggressive needs who are going to bet but bet with aces jacks or with aces and kings and uh, queens right maybe maybe they're going to defend maybe they will jam into you okay uh so some of the ace jacks we call i think we are going to call I think we are going to 3-bet a little bit with our queens to charge his jacks as well. Okay, we are going to just call 10s, 9s, 8s, 7s, 6s. So some 5s we raise, some 5s we call. We call 6-5, five, 5-4. Five, we might actually raise 5-4 as a bluff to compensate for so many value bets and our queen value bets. We are going to call jack 10, very weak one. Yeah and let's see what else two two uh these three three four four are still very good to call i think or raise sometimes you can call you can raise i think because they are near these boards near these draw straights so i think they're really good to play here as well okay we will play them either call or raise okay what do i want to fold i think i want to fold this ace 10 really hard to realize any potential with ace 10 you need two cards at least to you see to work with this hand to get your straight very difficult so i fold it it doesn't have potential if the opponent bets especially 50 percent or 75 percent you don't have that much equity right you need two cards guys that would favor you it is really hard to get and no flushes you know no potential flushes you don't want to play with this hand even if you catch an ace the opponent might have ace queen ace king ace jack right so you really suck with this hand so we fold this hand um we are going i think to call with uh 
Okay, we need to deal with this one. Um, hearts, clubs, and spades. Okay, this one. Ten, nine. Yes. Um, so this jack we are going just to call. Okay. Wait, apply. Ten, nine. Okay, good. Um, this hand, jack nine, we will just call with this one. Uh, queen 10, the same. We're going to use these hearts, clubs, and spades to call. Um, like this. Okay. Uh, King 10, the same. So all these like potentially cool guys um, that, that are going to be runner, runner, flushes, and runner, runner, straights. Uh, but they are at the same time, right? Not like, like that ace 10 offsuit. Yeah, they are at the same time like this. So we can call with them. Uh, ace 9, king 9, queen 9, we're going to, I think, fold most of the time. We're really far away from these jacks. Only 10s kind of make weather for us. So maybe some 10s are fine. But ace 9, I really want to fold here. Even if I catch a 10, it's so difficult with it. Hmm. Yeah, I really want to fold it. These guys, maybe you can, uh, ace king, you can call maybe fully because uh, there is a rainbow board and we can catch an ace or a king so all right um ace queen ace queen i think you can call you can fold i think so 50 percent i will call 50 percent i will fold okay what else king queen i think um most of the time i i think the same call and fold Mostly call, I think, because we are near jack, we need a 10 or an ace to get a draw straight. So it feels fine to call more than to fold. Okay. Uh, 7, 6. The same, like, it is near these cards, 7, 6. So I will apply this one. Hearts, clubs, and spades. I will call. A7, I think already further a little bit, but we need a 6 and we will be good here, right? So I will call with it. Okay, if we catch a 6 or a 9, I think they are very playable still. 9-7, already a little bit much more difficult to play, right? So it is like a double gut shot. Two, two, <laughs> two gaps in here, right? A 6, a 6 gap, right? Let me think, if I catch, catch a 6 or a 10, well, still kind of playable, right? Still kind of playable, but not that much. I think I would prefer to fold it. 10, 9, mm, maybe the same. I would prefer to fold it. Only 9 helps us. If calling, I would call rather 9, 7 than 10, 8. So maybe 10, 8 I will fold and 10, 7. At the same time, it's still hard. Look, if you get a 10, yeah, like you will have jack, 10, 9, and you need an 8. Very difficult to play, but at the same time, you can have draw straight, draw flush, right, on the turn. So maybe this is all right. It's a difficult hand here. 9-8, um, I prefer to fold 9-8. Only 10s help us here, right? So fold it out. So these guys, um, queen, king, kind of you want to call with them and you don't want to call with them. Maybe I would, I would fold ace-9 and I would call and fold king-9, queen-9. Yeah. Jesus, so... Um, <laughs> Really, I don't know how to work with this program that much. Like, I understand that there are some filters, but I really want to um, kind of see my hands, their weights, their colors and stuff. So that's why I really prefer Power Equal App more. But some people really like this Flopzilla program. It really suits them. Uh, it doesn't suit me. Yeah, so uh, that's how... Oh, wait a second. What are we going to do with these two guys? Ace, Queen and King, Queen. The same, I think. I will call with the colors like this, like this, with these colors I will call. Yeah, so that's it for this hand so far. Yeah, uh, we do raise some hands. Uh, so we do raise some ace jacks and queens, right? I think this is really good. And we raise some of our bluffs, ace four, ace three, especially with the colors. Some of colors can raise as well sometimes. Ace two can raise sometimes with the colors appropriate, like hearts and clubs, right? And some fives, some twos, I think very rarely we can raise as well. So that's fine. Jacks we can raise or most of the time I think we can just call. 
yeah voila that's it about this hand um i hope you enjoyed it i definitely did enjoy this though the program is new but that's all right i really hope i will be able to pay for my power equilab very soon um yeah and that's it for it today yeah thank you very much guys keep uh, keep in touch okay see you in the next video bye bye